Hello everyone, and welcome to me reading the story of Lafcadio, The Lion Who Shot Back, by Shel Silverstein. I always love reading out loud to people. It's one of my favorite things to do, so I decided that I would annoyingly share that passion with the rest of the world. So here we go. Even your old Uncle Shelby once had a teacher. His name was Robert Cosby. This book is dedicated to him. Lafcadio. The lion who shot back. And now, children, your Uncle Shelby is going to tell you a story about a very strange lion. In fact, the strangest lion I have ever met. Now, where shall I start this lion tale? I mean, this lion tale. I suppose that I should begin at the moment when I first met this lion. Let's see, that was in Chicago on Friday the 17th of December. I remember very clearly because the snow had just started to turn to slush and the traffic was very bad on Dorchester Avenue and this lion was looking around for a barbershop and I was just coming home from... No. I suppose I should start this story long before that. I suppose I should tell you about the lion when he was very young. All right. Chapter 1. Once there was a young lion and his name was, well, I don't really know what his name was because he lived in the jungle with a lot of other lions and if he did have a name it certainly wasn't a name like Joe or Ernie or anything like that. No, no. It was more of a lion name like uh, maybe Grograf or Grrr or Grumpf or Grrr. Well anyway, uh, he had a name like that and he lived in the jungle with the other lions and he did the usual lion things like jumping and playing in the grass and swimming in the river and eating rabbits and chasing other lions and sleeping in the sun and he was very happy. Well, then, one day, I believe it was a Thursday, after all the lions had eaten a good lunch and were sleeping in the sun, snoring lion snores and the sky was blue and the birds were going caw caw and the grass was blowing in the breeze and it was quiet and wonderful, suddenly I'm really good at sound effects. There was such a loud sound. All the lions woke up fast and jumped straight up in the air. And they started to run. Lickety-split, lickety-clipped, or clippity-clop, clippity-clopper. Is that the way horses run? Well, they ran whatever way lions run. I don't know, maybe even pippity-pat. Anyway, they all ran away. Well, almost all. There was one lion that did not run, and that is the one I'm going to tell you the story about. This one lion, he just sat up and blinked and winked in the sun and stretched his arms. Well, maybe he stretched his paws and he rubbed the sleep out of his eyes and he said, Hey, why is everybody running? And an old lion who was running by said, Run, kid! Run, 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 run! The hunters are coming! Hunters? Hunters? What are hunters? said the young lion, still blinking in the sun. Look, said the old lion, you'd better stop asking so many questions and just run, if you know what's good for you. So the young lion got up and stretched and began to run with the other lions. pippity pad or, or was it clippity-clop? I think we have gone through all of this before. And after he had run for a while, he stopped and looked back. Hunters, he said to himself. I wonder what hunters are. And he said the name Hunters over and over to himself. Hunters, Hunters. And you know, he liked the sound of the name Hunters. You know, like the way some people like the sound of the words Tuscaloosa, or Tapioca, or Carioca, or Gumbo. He liked the sound of the word Hunters. So he let all the other lions run ahead, and he stopped, and he hid in the tall grass. And soon he could see the hunters coming, and they all stood on their hind feet, and they all wore nice little red caps, and they all carried funny sticks that made loud noises. And the young lion liked their looks. Yes, he just liked their looks. So when a nice hunter with green eyes and one tooth missing in the front passed by the tall grass with his funny red cap, well, that had some egg salad on it, by the way, the young lion stood up. Hi, hunter, he said. Good heavens, cried the hunter. A ferocious lion, a dangerous lion, a roaring, bloodthirsty, man-eating lion. I am not a man-eating lion, said the young lion. I eat rabbits and blackberries. No excuses, said the hunter. I'm going to shoot you. But I give up, said the young lion, and he put up his paws in the air. Don't be silly, said the hunter. Who ever heard of a lion giving up? Lions don't give up. Lions fight to the end. Lions eat up hunters. So I must shoot you now and make you into a nice rug and put you in front of my fireplace. And on cold winter evenings, I will sit on you and toast marshmallows. Well, my goodness, you don't have to shoot me, said the young lion. I will be your rug. 
and I will lie in front of your fireplace and I won't move a muscle, and you can sit on me and toast all the marshmallows you want. I love marshmallows, said the young lion. You won't, said the hunter. Well, said the young lion, to be absolutely honest with you, I don't know if I really love marshmallows or not because I've never tasted one, but I love most things. I love the sound of the word marshmallow, and if they taste like they sound, mmm, I just know I will love them. That's ridiculous, said the hunter. I've never heard of a lion giving up. I've never heard of a lion eating marshmallows. I'm going to shoot you now, and that is that. And he put his funny stick up to his shoulder. But why? said the young lion. Because I am. That is why, said the hunter. And he pulled the trigger, and the stick went click. What was that click? said the young lion. Am I shot? Well, as you can imagine, the hunter was very embarrassed about this, and his face turned as red as his cap. I'm afraid I forgot to load my gun, he said. I guess the joke is on me. <laughs> but if you will just excuse me for a moment. I will put a bullet in, and we will go on from there. No, said the young lion. I don't think I will. I don't think I will let you put a bullet in. I don't think I will let you shoot me. I don't think I want to be your rug, and I don't think you are a very nice hunter after all, and I think I'm going to eat you up. But why? said the hunter. Because I am. That's why, said the young lion. And he did. And after he had eaten the hunter all up, he ate the hunter's red cap, but it tasted sort of wooly. And after he had eaten up the red cap, phew, doesn't it make your mouth feel funny to think about eating a red cap? He tried to eat up the funny stick and the bullets, but he couldn't chew them, so he said, Well, I guess I will keep these as a souvenir. And he picked them up in his teeth, and he carried them back to the other lions. Chapter 2 Now, the other lions were all sitting around telling stories about who was the fastest and running away from the hunters, and who was the bravest, and who was the fiercest, and other lies like that that lions like to lie about. And when the young lion walked up to them, carrying the funny stick, they all jumped up and said, Yowie! And yow And wow! And where did you get that gun? 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 What is a gun? asked the young lion. That is the stick they shoot us with, said the old lion. Now take it out of here and throw it away. It gives me goosebumps just to look at it. Now <laughs> isn't that a silly thing to say? Imagine a lion getting goosebumps. That is almost as silly as a goose getting lion bumps. So the young lion sadly walked away with the gun in his teeth. I wonder, said the young lion to himself, I wonder how they shoot this thing anyway. So he picked up a bullet in his teeth, and he pushed it into the gun with his nose, and he shoved it into the barrel with his tongue. Then he stuck his left tooth into the trigger and tried to shoot, but he couldn't. Then he stuck his right tooth into the trigger and tried to shoot it, but he couldn't. And then he tried to pick it up with his paws and shoot with his claws, which was even sillier. And he tried to shoot it with his whiskers, and all he got out of that was tired whiskers. And he stuck his tail into the trigger, and he pulled as hard as he could, and the gum went, BAROOM! Sound effects. And all the other lions jumped up in the air again and started to run away. Hey, said the young lion, stop running! It is only me, and I have shot the gun! Well, I tell you, that when the other lions found out it was only the young lion making all that noise, they were very angry. You had better forget about shooting, they said, and stick to lighting where you belong. But the young lion was very happy about shooting the gun, and do you know what he started to do? Well, every afternoon while the other lions were sleeping, he would sneak away over the mountain, and he would practice and practice and practice for hours and hours, until finally one day he was able to lift the gun up in his paws. And he practiced and practiced for days and days, until finally he was able to shoot the gun. But, of course, he wasn't able to hit anything except the sky. And so he practiced and practiced for weeks and weeks, until finally he was able to hit the big mountain. And he practiced and practiced for months and months, until soon he was able to shoot the waterfall. And soon he was able to shoot the cliff. And soon he was able to shoot the trees, and soon the coconuts off the trees, and then the berries off the bush, and then the flies off the berries, and then the ears off the flies, and the dust off the ears, and finally the sunlight! off the dust. And do you think he was a good shot? Well, just the best in the world, that's all. Just the best shot in the whole world. And what did he do for ammunition? Why, every time he ran out of bullets, he just went out and ate up another hunter and took his bullets, and then went back and practiced some more. Chapter 3 And then one nice day as he was practicing, the young lion heard some shooting from the other side of the jungle, and I don't have to tell you what happened. All the lions started running again. Where are you running? 
asked the young lion. Look, said the old lion, we have gone through all this before. You had better just stop asking so many questions and move. So the young lion moved, but after he had been running for a while, he stopped and he said to himself, Hey, why am I running away? And he sat down right there in the middle of the jungle and began to shoot back at the hunters. Boom! Boom! And suddenly, guess what? <laughs> there were no more hunters left. And after a while, all the other lions came crawling out of their hiding places, and they couldn't believe their eyes, and they said, Hey, what is going on around here anyway? And, hey, what's happening? And, golly gee! And stuff like that. And they were all surprised and happy, and they all had lunch, and then they lay down and slept in the sun with smiles on their faces and little bits of red wool on their whiskers. And the young lion? Why, he was the happiest of all, because he had piles and piles of new ammunition, and all the other lions said that he was the greatest lion that they had ever seen. And they'd seen plenty of lions. So all the lions lived a very happy life and slept all afternoon and played in the sun and floated in the river and had a good time and never worried about anything. Because every time hunters came to shoot, why, that young lion just shot right back at them. Boom, bum, bim, bim, bam! Until there were no more hunters left. And when men came into the jungle to find out what happened to the hunters, bim, bam, boom! Pretty soon there weren't any more of the finder-outers left. And when men came to find out about the finder-outers, boom, bam, bim! Pretty soon there weren't any more of the finder-outers about the finder-outers left, and pretty soon no men came to the jungle at all. And it was nice and quiet, and all the lions were fat and happy, and all of them had nice hunter rugs. Chapter 4 But then one rainy afternoon, while the young lion was practicing some very fancy shooting, like standing on his head and shooting with his teeth and his toenails and his elbows with one eye closed and behind his back and sideways and even upside down, a little fat bald-headed man came walking through the jungle, and he had on a tall funny hat and an elegant vest and a golden watch with a golden chain and shiny shoes, and he had a droopy mustache and a big fat belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of raspberry jam, and he carried a gold-headed cane, and you could see that he wasn't used to walking through the jungle, because he kept getting caught in the branches of the trees, and he kept tripping over roots, and he kept stepping into puddles, and he kept saying, oh me, oh my, and oh ye, and hey, it is hot, and darn mosquitoes, and achoo! and stuff like that. Well, now the lions didn't hear him coming until the very last minute, because although lions have very good ears and they can hear things from far off, if their ears are uh, uh, washed, that is, but if their ears aren't washed, they can't hear much better than you can. And to tell you the truth, I don't think lions wash their ears very often, because uh, wash rags are very hard to get in the jungle, and soap costs 10 cents, and most lions don't have 10 cents, and even if they did, they couldn't buy a bar of soap, because who would sell a bar of soap to a lion? If the lion came knocking at your door and had ten cents in his paw and said, May I borrow a bar of soap? Would you sell him a bar of soap? Well, so you can see why these lions didn't hear too well. But they saw him coming, and I'll tell you one thing, lions' eyes are always very good, and they can see very well in the dark. And it happened to be in the middle of the afternoon anyway, and lions see extra special well in the middle of the afternoon, and you never see a lion wearing glasses, do you? No. When the lion saw the little man coming, they didn't even bother to run. They just called out to the young lion, Hey! Dinner is here! And then they rolled over and went back to sleep. And the young lion, he just yawned and picked up his gun. I think I will shoot this one standing on my head with one eye crossed and three paws tied behind my back, he said, and he aimed his gun. Uh, wait, wait a minute, don't shoot me, cried the man. And the young lion said, why not? And the man said, because I am not a hunter. I am a circus man, and I want you to come and be in my circus. Circus smirkus dominurcus, said the young lion. I do not want to be in a cage in your old circus. Uh, you wouldn't have to be in a cage, shouted the circus man. You can be my trick shooter. Shooter, smooter, scooter, booter, said the young lion. I am already a great shooter. I'm the greatest shooter in the jungle. And he aimed his gun again. But you can make lots of money, and you can be the greatest shooter in the world, and you can be famous, and eat wonderful foods, and wear silk shirts, and yellow shoes, and smoke 50 cent cigars, and go to wonderful parties, and have everyone pat you on your back, or scratch you behind the ears, or whatever people do to lions, I don't know. Ear shears of glass of beers, said the young lion. What do I want with all that stuff? Everyone wants that stuff, said the circus man. Come with me and be rich and famous and happy and be the greatest lion in all the world. Well, said the young lion, if I do come, will I get a marshmallow? A marshmallow, said the circus man, waving his gold-headed cane and twirling the golden watch on a golden chain. A marshmallow? Why, my good fellow, you will have thousands of marshmallows. You will have marshmallows for breakfast, marshmallows for lunch, and marshmallows for supper. And do you know what you will have between meals? Marshmallows? asked the young lion. Marshmallows! 
shouted the circus man. I will build you a marshmallow house, and I will get you a marshmallow mattress for your bed for midnight snacks, and I will make you a marshmallow suit with a marshmallow hat, and when you take a shower, you will take a shower with hot melted marshmallow. Why, you will have more marshmallows than any line in the world. Shall I sing you the marshmallow song? Marshmallows, marshmallows, marching, marching, mellow, marling, mellows, marching, fellows, marching, mercy. I'd rather you didn't, said the young lion. Well, it's really not too bad a song, said the circus man, considering that I just made it up. Well, anyway, uh, pick up your gun, pack up your suitcase, and let's go to the big city. I don't have a suitcase, said the young lion. Too bad you aren't an elephant, said the circus man, because then you could pack up your trunk. <laughs> That is a pretty corny joke, said the young lion, even for the jungle. Hrmph, snorted the circus man. Okay, pack up your toothbrush and let's get out of here. I don't have a toothbrush, said the young lion. No toothbrush, said the circus man. How do you brush your teeth? I don't brush my teeth, said the young lion. You don't brush your teeth, said the circus man. What does your dentist have to say about that? I don't have a dentist, said the young lion. You don't have a dentist, said the circus man. Well, then who? Look, said the young lion. If you want to go, I will go. I will do anything rather than listen to all your terrible jokes. So the circus man got on the lion's back and they marched out of the jungle. You are sure about those marshmallows, said the young lion. Absolutely sure, said the circus man. And away they went. And that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. You will see the next four chapters in the next video. And uh, I will hopefully see you guys next time.